Claudio, thanks for sitting down with me today. Great to see you. Thank you, Sean. It's been a busy week here in Montreal already. Yeah, it's been quite busy, but uh, our committee meetings ran well, and uh, our IGM, we got positive feedbacks, and now I'm here to see the rest of the show put up by CSGA, which I'm also excited to attend. So regulatory affairs and policy coordinator. How long have you been in this role with CSTA? Since uh, September, so almost 10 months only. It's my first AGM. 10 months, and one of your key uh, responsibilities is overseeing the committees and making sure that they continue to move forward. Can you talk a little bit about how do you generate that engagement and, and drive the initiatives of those uh, committees forward? Well, I think we at CSTA are pretty lucky to have really engaged members, so it's actually not that, that hard. Uh, if I uh, contact the committee leaderships with issues and questions uh, regarding agendas, work plan items, usually I get feedback in the first couple of days, right? So, so these people came voluntary to the committee, they volunteered their time, and they have great uh, interest and energy to support the industry, so it's not hard for me. And Dave says, otherwise, just go out and harass them. And if they're not engaged, that means the topic might not be that critical. And then there's silence. And then we move on to a different subject. So I'm happy with, yeah, thank you to all the members and uh, people who volunteered on the committees. I think that um, one of the things I've heard over the last 10 months is that, that your passion for the topics comes across loud and clear. And I think that that goes a long ways to helping to keep people engaged and to drive forward on these topics. But, but to your point, if the topic isn't important, let's not talk about it. There's yeah. lots of topics we can focus in on. And so having that laser focus has served you well, I'm guessing. So do, can we call that German laser focus? <laughs> we could certainly call it German laser focus in a Canadian environment, uh, which I'm happy to be in. And, uh, and yeah, so we constantly strive to improve the member experience. I took over the committees uh, coming straight out of university, learning a lot about Canadian agriculture. So um, yeah, I'm very passionate, uh, I'm still improving my knowledge and uh, I, I hope my journey continues and uh, is continuing to be successful. Perfect. So speaking of that, I got a quote here of yeah. you. I come to Canada with the knowledge that if we, as an industry, fail to be proactive in the area of science policy, we in Canada will have a public relations disaster on our hands. What do you mean by disaster and, and, and how, would, how would that look? Probably like uh, compared to the public reception in Europe. Uh, I come from Germany, obviously, as you could hear by my slight accent. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, we grew up uh, in an environment uh, where uh, there's obviously fear-mongering, I would call it, and scientific misinformation about GMOs, and uh, uh, the general public is not in, uh, immune to that, and we hope that in the wave of the new biotechnologies coming out, speaking about gene editing, speaking about CRISPR, and the new technologies, that we don't make the same mistakes, uh, uh, have go ahead, as what many people say, step, stay one step ahead uh, of other people trying to influence the discussion. So. A public relations disaster would be comparable to the situation where what we currently have in Europe. Um, so, in order to avoid that, we need to be proactive in our messaging and um, stay on top of things. So, you have the responsibility of satisfying government, industry, and the public, all under your responsibility to, to get that message out. What's the magic formula? How do you how do you make that happen? Well, if I had the magic formula, I might be uh, in, 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 uh, in another place, but give me a, maybe an answer because um, I would say that um, for the government and the consumer combined, we should just show, continue, show continuously that the products are safe, right? That's what government are looking for. That is what the consumer is looking for. Government and industry, um, we need to show an economic boost, that these products are valuable, that these products uh, boost yield, uh, um, give an advantage to the farmer, give an advantage to the Canadian economy. Right. So, so the interesting thing I think about that is, so what I'm hearing you say is we just have to continue to tell the story. Because we're not making things up, we're just having to tell the story. The, exactly. The good pieces of the story. We have to tell the good pieces of the story. Uh, from an industry perspective, um, we, we, we want to uh, convince everybody that there's be better varieties for the farmers particularly. 
who might think, uh, how will this impact us? How will this uh, boost our yields? So we need to ensure industry that we um, bring better varieties to the farmer. We need to ensure the government uh, that it's safe and we could go out with messages to the consumer that we develop cool new varieties like, for example, gluten-free wheat, tackle peanut allergies, for example. You know, that's all cool stuff coming out which could increase um, the consumer's health or the consumer's choices and non-allergenic products. For, it's just an example. Absolutely. So, as you said, we just came off of uh, a number of days of committee meetings with CSTA. What, what would you say is your one biggest takeaway, takeaway slash success story out of your committee meetings that you had at your AGM here in Montreal? I would say the IP committee was uh, fantastic. I mean, uh, being in the industry for nine months, I don't feel the pain. Maybe some other people voiced about being uh, active for eight years on one topic. So for me, it progressed rather, uh, uh, rather uh, quickly. Right. But uh, it was funny, the, the secretary travel ladder of the IP committee told me like, and when he sent me an email with the minutes, he's like, here are some historic minutes for you to check out. So. That was an amazing meeting and uh, you could feel the energy there and uh, we are all happy that we passed that motion. It's dynamite. That's a real step forward. Absolutely. Can, can you just share with me in nickel version, what, 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 was the, what was the decision made at, at the IP committee? Well, the, the decision uh, was made, uh, what we call value creation or value capture, uh, to, to introduce a farm safe seed royalty or for CSTA to adopt the policy that we support the farm safe seed royalty option, and we now can have a uh, we now have a policy to advocate for at the government level. They will have consultations on both options, but finally, the seed industry has one position which we can advocate for. And having one position will now allow the group to to iron out the details going in that direction. Exactly. Now we can finally work on details. We can flush out. The devil in the details, that is something I hear a lot in Canada, which, yeah. um, Absolutely. which we uh, will work on hard from now on. Awesome. So outside of the, the IP committee day of success after eight or nine years of working on the file, what's your favorite working day in Canada so far, Claudio? Well, funny you should ask, but it's, it didn't actually happen in Canada, but it happened on behalf of Canada. So I was in Zurich for ISF March meetings mm -hmm. with Dave. He had to leave one day early, so he told me I will represent the Canadian Seed Trade Association at the National Seed Association, Regional Seed Association meetings at ISF. So, so here I am, a new immigrant uh, from Germany and Canada, um, representing uh, the Canadian Seed Trade at, at such a high level meeting and giving a presentation about our plant breeding working group. So, was definitely a proud but also surreal moment because I never expected stuff like this would happen when I first arrived last May. Awesome. Great story. I, I'm not going to lie, I kind of thought it would be sitting down for a uh, germination uh, interview. <laughs> with, I, I'm shocked that it was something with in Zurich. <laughs> well, this is also something I didn't expect because uh, when, I, when I was applying for the job, this is a tool I used to, to, re to do my research to come nice. prepared to the Sea Trade Association interview with Dave Carey. I watched your video, so thank you very much. I think it did a, did a lot for me to be able to sit here, and that is how the circle is closed. Comes together, beautiful. Um, I, I have heard nothing but fantastic things about the work that you've been doing with the association, Claudio, so kudos to you. I'm curious, why do you think you've been able to integrate so quickly into the organization? Like, like you said, you're 10 months in, and yet, you engage and or have become part of the association in such a big way. Why, why do you think that is? Um, well, that's a tough question for me to answer because um, I see myself as a, as a per person um, who does, does the hard work and uh, I, I came with very li little knowledge of the regulatory system. I had the strong science background, that's why Dave hired me, but Every day I worked hard um, uh, with the help of the colleagues in the office, Kim, Chris, and Dave, now, now Lauren, and all the committee leaderships and engaged people. Like uh, I went to farm tours in Chatham, Kent, and met the members, and just read up a lot and talk to people, even at CFI, our government colleagues. So everybody helps, and I think my own personal drive, having a research background, I'm happy to read the documents. I'm happy to, to yeah, just 
dive in deep and uh, have my personal commitment to grow as an immigrant in Canada, to establish myself here and do a good job. And um, I'm staying passionate and I'm hoping this story will continue. Awesome. We don't very often have regulatory or policy people that have actually done gene editing. And for you to understand that to that kind of level, I, I think that's got to serve you pretty well. Yes, I think so too. Um, speaking of the plant breeding innovation working group, we formed uh, in coalition with CropLife and the uh, Canadian Grains Council. Uh, the government recently uh, announced a biotech sub-working group in response to the letter we sent to the Minister of Agriculture, which is available on, this, uh, on our website. Um, yeah, I can certainly bring in my technical expertise. I know how easy it is, um, well, I, I, if you study biology, but even uh, to get into the science, maybe from a layman's perspective, how efficient it is, how cost efficient it is. So, I'm trying to bring that expertise to the table uh, with my colleagues who are more regulatory focused um, to develop uh, some models and um, yeah, advocate on behalf of the Canadian sea trade. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for sitting down with me today and I know the association is very happy to have you. Thanks, Sean. It's been a pleasure. As I said, I watched you before I got the job and now I'm here, so I'm happy. Thank you, Claudio. Thanks, Sean. Cheers. Cheers.